What is up, Hammerheads? Welcome back to The Forge. The time is finally here. We are forging our prongs for our spit. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm gonna talk about a couple things while I'm waiting on the forge to heat up. And get my camera adjusted. So I am using a little bit over a, when I say a little bit over, it's like four inches and a quarter, something like that. It's not, it's right about four inches. I didn't actually measure this exactly, but both of my pieces are the same length. Now, I'm only forging one of these because the process to make one and the process to make two is the exact same, but I want to talk about what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat the whole piece up. And then we're going to quench about an inch on both sides. Let me grab my chalk real quick. Grab soapstone real quick. So we're going to do about an inch or so, maybe a little bit over an inch on both sides. We're going to heat the whole thing up and then quench about this much and about this much it's not going to be exact but roughly what i'm going to do then is come out turn it upright on the anvil and hammer down on it to upset this center so i have enough mass to put this square hole in and i wanted enough mass to make sure i had enough mass to put the square hole in and drift the hole out and everything would be good and sturdy and i wouldn't be working with like 16th of an inch material i would have at least an eighth inch to a quarter inch material to be able to poke this hole through on each side plus a lot of mass on the top and bottom where a lot of pressure is going to be so first thing we're going to do and this takes quite a few heats guys is we're going to heat this up and then upset these two sections or this one section in the middle remember i'm going to come out i'm going to quench i'm going to quench and then i'm going to hurry up over here and hammer down you might not really get to see the quench process but you'll see i'll bring i'll let you see as I come over that this section and this section has been cooled down because I really don't want to upset here and here I just really want to focus in the center already see guys it's starting to push it in a little bit this is going to take quite a few heats so it's going to be a lot of in the forge quenching those sides and flipping it back out pay attention as you're doing this your material will start bending in certain places and you stop upsetting and then you just start bending so I'll straighten as I'm going but you can already see a mass starting to form here don't get frustrated if you don't get it in a couple heats work one side flip it work the other side so you get a good even upset all right guys, so I hope you can see this. In our endeavors of doing this, we started at four inches. We've upset this about a half an inch. And it's mainly been located right here in this section here. 
This little bit upset a little bit more than this side, it isn't gonna hurt anything. I mainly needed mass right here in the center. So, I'm gonna go back in the fire and I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna start forging from here and from about right here and I'm gonna start forging out our tines which will we'll bend and then we'll eventually stick into the meat. Alright, so I'm gonna start drawing this out. And I'm gonna establish a shoulder in two points. So I don't go past that. So when you're doing a shoulder, half on, half off blows, guys. It's hard to do with the camera right here in the way. I'm trying not to hit the camera. All right. Got the shoulder established on two sides. So now I'm going to draw up the tines. And I'm going to make them roughly about eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. And on both sides. Now I am going to go ahead and establish the shoulder on the other side. So I know where my material is being worked at and I'm not having to guess where the uh, eye is going to be for our punch or where we're going to punch the eye at. Sorry about the uh, way the sunlight's coming in guys. I'm hoping I will have that fixed in the next month or so. I get too many things on my plate. So you can see now I've got them about evenly divided out. Now if one tine ends up walking the other, it's not the end of the world. You can cut it off, reshape it, or leave it a little longer. It's not gonna hurt it. I always on these, I've been trying to allow for a little extra, uh, allow for extra material just in case I do make one too long or something happens. And start working on what's going to be our square drift now this is the same size material as our spit and all i want to do is go completely around all 360 making a point squared out i want to keep this as squared as possible there we go sorry about that but I want to keep it as squared as possible. So, when I go to run it through the eye, I don't have to do a lot of adjustments. So, I'm going to keep drawing this out into a sharper point. It'll be a little blunt on the end like this one. And then we'll just cut it off. to make a leaf guys I want to keep everything a smooth transition into this and I want to keep it as centered as possible now I'm gonna clean it up a little bit but I'm gonna stop about right there with this and you can see it's pretty much uniform. I'm actually gonna cut it off about right up here. So when I drive it down, I can actually shape it around uh, the eye of our prong. Just tapping it right now, guys, getting everything lined up. I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna quench it real. I'm gonna get it hot and I'm gonna quench it. It's mild still, it's really not gonna harden. But I'm gonna give myself every option I need 
just in case. I got a little bit more I gotta go, but I gotta make sure I work on the actual tip too. I don't want it to be a cold shut on the end. So what I'll do is tap back on it a little bit on this low side and start forming this into my point. So guys, I'm gonna finish drawing this out to the length that I want it. Now you can draw these out about as long as you want. You know, I wouldn't go super long because they're gonna be really thin and with the weight that you might put on it, you do, but you also wanna have them long enough that they stick far enough into the meat to where it won't come off. So I'm probably gonna go to about right here with these. I'm not gonna touch it, it's hot. But, so I'm gonna work on that Flip it around, draw it the other side, okay guys? I'll see you in a minute. All right guys, so I'm just finishing up and my tines are almost the same length and the same thickness. So I'm gonna round them up. Or to, I'm gonna actually drill then drift, all right, guys? So I'm gonna let it cool down. I'll go about center right here with it. But you see, I'm stopping and looking. I can do my center punch and then change it if I want to, but I'm trying to look and make sure this is the direction I want this hole to go. So when I bend these, they're gonna come straight up, so that's what I'm looking for. And that's about center right there. So, you can get as technical as you want to with this. Now I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. And then, you can see my hole right there. Sorry guys, the sunlight is horrible. You can see my hole right here. So I'm gonna drill it out, and then we're gonna drift it with our drift. Now this is mild steel I did this with. But as you can see, I tapered the end a little bit. I'm gonna do my forging here, but when I go to drive this out, if I decide I wanna drive it all the way out and drive it all the way back through, I tapered this end a little bit so it would release easier and I wasn't gonna have to take a punch and drive it out. Now, something to remember and I'm gonna tell you at the end. This is half inch. My bar is half inch that my spit is. So I have to take a file after I'm done and shape, file this out a little bit so it slides better because of burrs and things like that. So, I'm gonna let this cool down, pop it over in the vise and drill the hole. I'm not gonna show drilling the hole, guys, because I'm just drilling a hole. But I will, we're gonna go through the whole drifting process in detail. I'm gonna try to do a couple different camera angles while I'm doing this, okay, guys? So we'll see what we can do and make this look good. All right, guys, so there's my hole drilled. I know somebody's probably going to ask me, why didn't I punch the hole? How much metal did I lose? You really don't lose a ton of metal by drilling. By what I'm doing. Now, if you're, if you're drilling all the way out to the edge and then you're going to lose some material. But for the project and what I'm doing right here, I really don't lose a lot of metal versus punching the hole. Now, what I'm going to do is put it back in the fire. Come out with my drift. Go right here in the hole and I'm going to start hammering it through. Um, I will have to move over to another anvil because my hardy hole's too big, my pretzel hole's too big to drive this through a little bit better without boogering it up real bad. So, we'll move over to my old anvil here shortly. 
but I want to at least get the square hole started. I'm going to come in from one side, then flip it over and come in from the other side. What I'm doing is creating where I want the square hole to be on both sides and making sure it's lined up. All right, guys, one rule on this. Keep your metal hot while you're doing this. what it should have been you can see that we're starting our square hole right there guys now i'm going to the other side and now i'm going to start driving from this end and once i get it established then i'll start actually drifting the eye out don't forget to quench off your 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 drift Woo. Uh, so it's not hot every time you grab it. It's mild still, so you're not going to hurt it. All right, guys, you can see it's lined up pretty good right there. come out this next go around I can get this out <laughs> there we go now when I come out the next go around I'm coming back through this side and I'm gonna go over to my other anvil so we'll be over at it and I'm gonna be hammering it through and shaping this eye a little bit more guys got a really good heat here now well, that's still a little warm that's why you, I wear a glove now I'm gonna grab it with my tongs Heat. You can see, guys, it's forming it out really well. So be careful, guys, when you're doing this. If you look right here, I've got a nick that I put in this. Maybe you can see it better like that. And that's because it caught the corner of the pretzel hole or something while I was hammering it. It's not so much a big deal here, but it's a really big deal up top. Whenever you're trying to uh, shape it out, you don't want to have any imperfections too bad inside that you're going to have to file out so it'll slide up and down the spit better. guys got the punch now i'm gonna go back through i got my drift i'm going back through this side now going back through the other side now it is guys our square hole now if your hole's a little big it isn't going to be the end of the world uh, you don't want it massive like if you have half inch you don't want your hole your square hole to be three quarter if it's a little bit bigger it's better because that means it'll slide up and down the rail a lot easier on your spit so let's go back over to the forge we're going to bend our tines over cool it down drill and tap a hole and then this bad boy's done guys Alright guys, I'm just going over the horn of the anvil right here. 
just to get this bend just like how we did our hot dog fork you see it'll hook I bent that in the wrong spot bend with your square hole not on the wrong side of your square hole <laughs> try that again here in a second let's reheat and see if i can bend it in the right place this time ah. My own little world. Guys, let's try that one more time. Take two. I do like a slight little bend in these where they expand out a little bit more. Like that. All right, let's heat up the other side. Time for prong number two. Now, I leave them a little offset. I, you can straighten them if you want to, and I was about to straighten it. But I wanna make sure my other ones don't hit and that it holds the meat kinda good. I kinda like it. You can do it however you want to. If you want to straighten them, pop it in a vise or just tap it. You pretty much got them straightened up. Now, I'm gonna let this cool and then I'm gonna drill a hole and then we're gonna tap it and I'm gonna film that. If you've never tapped uh, a hole before, it's not hard. I use my drill to do it, but you can use a, a tap wrench to do it also. Just twist until you feel it get a little tight and then back off of it so it'll break it off. I'll talk about it here in a second, a little more. Those of you that never been here before and watched me drill a hole, uh, when I drill holes, first thing I do is center punch this thing. It's, I forgot to do that over here on the anvil. So get as center as you possibly can, but also look, you don't want to put it way up here, it ain't going to do anything. Where it's going to hit about center on your steel. Now, there's my center punch. Now, any imperfections I got here from the forging process, guys. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit. Sorry. So, any imperfections I got from the forging process, I can clean up if I want to. Get this where it's in here good and tight. <laughs> Live action right now, guys. Live action. No editing. Now, I always drill a smaller hole, pilot hole. Doesn't matter if I'm making a knife. There it went. Or if I'm drilling um, this, I always start with a small pilot hole. Uh, and I always run on low speed. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys that'll just have this wide open and they. I've always burnt my drill bits up more that way. Now, through there. Now, this is the size tap I'm using. I don't know what size it is. It's one that I found because, and then I mashed it up to some threads of a bolt that I have. And that's about as much as I know about the experience of that, okay guys? All I know is it's close to the size of this drill bit. And you can buy the kits. This is a 15, sorry, 13, 15 64th. Sorry, I was reading upside down. And if you listen, I have the clutch on this going. I have it set on 22 not drill. The reason why is a lot of times when I'm drilling metal, it'll catch on the back side and it'll break your bit if it's a smaller bit. So I put the clutch on so I have enough torque to drill the hole, but when it catches, it won't break, which is really handy when you're tapping and tapping because whenever it goes, when it catches, I know to pop it in reverse to knock the burr off.
See? Now. All right. Now, if I grab the right drill bit, which I know I did, see? This fits perfect right there. And whenever I go to cut my cut my uh t or cut my threads it'll work now make sure you have it level because you can get it to where it cross threads now if everything worked out right i can take my little bolt here that i got it'll thread in there Oh, grabbed the wrong size bolt. It's not the one right there. I must have picked up the wrong size. Let me double check that. And I'll admit my mistakes is I accidentally picked up. I had everything laid out from yesterday, but I picked up the wrong drill bit. What had happened is the drill bit that I used fell down here to the floor. So what I'm gonna do, cause this one's for me, is I'm gonna flip it to the other side and re-drill the hole. Mistakes happen, guys. I don't care how slow you go and how perfect people think they are, nobody's perfect. So let's flip to this side. I'm gonna re-drill the hole. Grab my center punch real quick. There it is. All right. Now. All right. Now that side, that's drilled. All right, let me get my other drill bit. I must have laid it down over here. Yep, that's what I did. That's why you always gotta pay attention to what you're doing, guys. I was even paying attention, I still messed up. Might have to go one more size up, but we'll see. I'm taking my time, because I wanna make sure I drill this right. Let me grab one more drill bit, guys. I'm trying to figure out what I did with it because I had everything right here together. But you can tell I keep things clean. <laughs> that was the one I just did. Found it. I know it was here. Yep, that's what it was. <laughs> Just got to slow down sometimes, guys. Clean that up. Now. Yeah, there it is. Now. See how I keep putting it in reverse, guys? I don't want it to uh, 
break the bit and I want the hole to be this takes a second but it's better to be cautious than mess it up let me grab a little bit of cutting oil I know I was forgetting to put something on here day of forgetting huh there we go and I always run it in as far as I can a couple times the second and third time I'm doing this there's no pressure on it I'm letting it just pull in now yeah perfect right there then I take my bolt and this bolt has its own little Loctite on it, so it does get a little bit stiff as you're rolling it in. But, see, it's not tight. I run the bolt in a couple times just to make sure all the threads are good, nothing got boogered up in the process. Now, I'm not an expert at tapping or uh, tapping or using dies to make bolts or tapping holes or and things like that. I know the basics. Now, But but don't freak out if you make a mistake, guys. Stuff happens. If it's something you're making for a client, you're going to have to restart. If it's something you're making for yourself, just fix it and move on. Now, I could have tapped that hole a little bit bigger on the other side and just put a bigger bolt in there, but I wanted everything to stay roughly the same size. Now... I'm going to file the inside of this really fast to get everything flush. Now, and it's just using just a small file, this right here. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we learned. All right, guys. So let's get real for a minute and talk about what we learned today. Well, we made our prongs. As you can see, I've got them both on here. This one's stuck a little bit because it's still a little tight. This one's moving a lot better. Um, and really what it's going to be is fit them on there file a little bit fit them on there and file a little bit but all in all i like the way they turned out i will probably straighten one of these out just a hair because i don't like the way it's bent but here are our prongs in a rough form other than just a tiny bit of tweaking they are done you could use them right now as they are um, you can also if you want to you can flip it around in survival situation makes a pretty cool looking frog gig or trident um but let's get real for a minute and talk about what we learned today so first and foremost stand this right here oh, stand it it's kind of a good in between ain't it all right so you learned how to upset the center of a piece of steel now pay attention to whenever you're doing your upset as i was saying in the video when you're upsetting, sometimes it'll try to bend on you and you're not upsetting, you're just bending. But you want to make sure as you smush that material in, it makes it to where it is pushing in just in the center. Now it will bend a little bit. So as you're forging, go ahead and start doing your uh, straightening process. You know, just tap on it a little bit. Don't try to forge it out. Just do your taps just to straighten it out. Whew, guys, sorry, I'm burning up. My hands are sweating. For this to be November, it is hot. Now, second, when you're making your tines, get them as uniform as you can, but as you can tell, on this one, it's a lot longer than this one. It's not the end of the world. Um, I kind of like them being different lengths. So one is if you have them sliding in on each other and the prongs could hit, you know, you can make sure your longer ends are, you know, opposite sides and they won't hit each other. But also, I don't know, I just think it grips the meat a little better. I don't know. It's one of those false securities that I kind of have. Um, but I like leaving them rough forged round. I feel like it will grip a little better versus it being slick round or slick square. I'm sure they all work about the same, but that's just my personal preference be careful now let's talk about drifting your eye 
So we'll talk about, I think it's a mosquito. Sorry guys, I have a tension span of a nap. All right, so let's talk about drifting the eye for a second. With your drift, I use the same size material that my spick was made out of. Now, if that's three quarter, use three quarter. What I would do is drift it round, like drill your hole, drift it round to a size smaller than what you want it to be, and then, or a size or two smaller than what you want it to be, then drift your square eye, probably two size smaller, because there's a taper, and you'll get a better form around the eye. Also, when you're drifting, be careful you don't booger up your end and get it stuck. I almost got, uh, this end got boogered up a little bit on my other one. And as you can see, I had to use a punch to get it out. Um, so just be careful while you're doing that. Make sure your metal is super, super hot and you keep it hot the whole time you're drifting or you can develop a crack on one of the sides and it could break. And your drift will also be just to one side. Is it the end of the world if, you're, if it's just to one side? No, it's not. But it's really hard to fix if you're trying to clean it up. Um, all you'll be able to really do is if you hammer it, you got the chance of deforming your eye. So what you'll have to do is sand it or grind it. And either one is not the end of the world, but it's something if you want to clean it up, you can. I personally don't because I leave the forged look to it and a lot of people like that. But again, be careful when you are drifting your eye that you don't crack it. Now, if you don't have a hardy hole or something you can drive through, I'm using half inch. So I would go up two sizes in a drill bit and then I would drill a hole through a piece of steel and then mount that to something or have it setting over something, you know, between two pieces of wood or whatever to where I could drive straight through and I'm not worried about messing anything up. That is a way to fix that. Um, if you would like to see a video on how to do that, just let me know, guys. I'll do it in an upcoming video on making a punch plate uh, and us rigging up a base. Because this is, remember, guys, in all my videos, I talk about common man and common sense, as Dave Canterbury said. Common man is, or common sense says, get the best you can afford. Common man, you know, or common sense says, get the best. Common man says, get the best you can afford. Sorry, I misquoted that a little bit. But it's the same thing. We're gotta make things work for us. So if you don't have an anvil, let's figure out how to make something work. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. Um, trying to think if there's any other things that we did. Uh, pay attention to when you're bending your tines. As I was saying, guys, uh, I accidentally bent one set in the wrong, wrong direction and had to straighten them back out. So make sure you pay attention to where your bends are. Also, when you're drilling your hole, I think Lowe's sells it, sells a drill bit and a tap. And that tap will tell you what thread count bolt you need to use. I was being cheap, so I already knew I had the taps, I already knew I had some bolts, so I knew I could make something work. That's why I couldn't tell you exactly what I was using, because I just drilled it and then found a bolt that worked and knew these two worked together. And you can do that if you're not an expert with tap and dies and drill bits, and I'm not. I'll never admit that I am. As you remember, and I, I, I showed it in the video, guys, I messed up on this hole because I picked up the wrong drill bit. Luckily, there was two sides that I could drill through. This isn't going to affect the integrity of the strength or anything. But if I was making this for a client, I would either have to fill that hole in with weld or I would have to make a whole new piece. So think about these things and slow down. If you need to run a test piece, run a test piece to make sure everything you're using is gonna work. But like I said, Lowe's and Home Depot, I think both sell a tap and a drill bit combo set that work together. If not, I think the sets are like right there together. I know Ace Hardware had like the taps and then the drill bits that would fit that size tap was right underneath them or something. And I'm a big, Buy the set if you can so you always know you have the right thing, especially when you're learning. But guys, that is our spit, our spick. I apologize, spit. It's a spit, right? 
I keep saying it wrong, and I think because my dad mispronounced it years ago, and I've just always said that. So if that is an offensive term, I do apologize. Um, I, I'm from the South. I can't enunciate well. I'm going to blame it on that. But that is the prongs for our spit. Again, I've got a few little tweaking things I'm going to do and a little bit of filing I have to do, guys. But other than that, they are finished. And this right here is just a long process of tapping it on, taking it off, filing for a bit, tapping it back on, you know, doing this until it fits smooth and fits good and tight. Now, our next video will be the trammel hook. Now, the trammel hook, whenever we put it in the tripod configuration, will hook right inside here, and it's an adjustable hook so you can raise pots up and down off the fire. So, guys, uh, another announcement I'm going to talk about. I am probably going to change my days that I upload my videos uh, to Saturday. Um, I started thinking about it this week and was like, well, if I put a video out on Tuesday and they're not able to do the project until Saturday, you have to go back and rewatch. So I was trying to make it to where the video posts, you can watch it, and then you can go out and do the project. And you're not having to wait a few days because of work or whatever's happening, especially this time of year with it getting later. So, uh, another couple things, just so you know. Um, I do have a TikTok shop now. Um, it's Refining Fire Forge. I am slowly putting my print-on-demand stuff there, like t-shirts. Um, I have a really neat-looking journal that has the dots in it so you can draw out your projects. Uh, different things like that. And I'm slowly going to be adding more stuff. I do have my new t-shirt that will be coming out hopefully tonight or tomorrow I can get it listed, but it's written in Chinese and it says made in America. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it's a joke that I've been doing for many years and I have some other ideas for some shirts and other items out there. Uh, funny thing is, is I think the shirt's made in China also. So it's just kind of a, a contradiction to itself or something, but I thought it was funny. So, you just got to know my sense of humor, guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that is the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button um, because I am doing my best to try to get to 1,000 subs by June of, before June of next year, and I'm at like 650-something. So, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, guys. I will see you on the next one. God bless. Keep hammering.